Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, guys, from Chapter 7, T Issue 3 and 4. Uh, we're looking at conflict today, and so we'll be going through it kind of quick. Uh, we'll be talking about why ethnicities clash, and we'll be talking about why or what is ethnic cleansing. And so we'll get into that's a pretty heavy topic. Um, we'll go through it kind of quickly, though, because uh, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. So looking at, we're starting, we have IDPs, internally displaced persons. And so we're looking at people who have been forced to move within their country but have no, have not crossed any international borders. So we talked a little bit about it way back in Unit 2 again when we talked about migration and the idea of people having to move from place to place. And the example was the same. Hurricane Katrina is a really good one. A lot of people left New Orleans or Louisiana and never came back. They, they moved to Houston. They moved to other surrounding areas and kind of stayed in those places. These are the same slides from, uh, is, from migration, is. right? They are the exact same slides. We cut and pasted them in there because they come back. They are so relevant to this yeah. place, right? And time. We also have to get into something that they call regional region of dislocation. We're going to go through a whole bunch of regions of dislocation and a whole bunch of conflicts here real quick when we look at ethnicities. Uh, and so the first one we have here is North Africa and Southwest Asia. Half the world's refugees are coming from the world. So we talk about Afghanistan and Iraq and Israel and Palestine, all things. We already talked a little bit about Israel and Palestine. Um, but all these things have created wars or tensions or civil wars or revolutions, and that has pushed people, out, obviously, out of those places. One of the reasons people leave is because of conflict. Do we really need to tell you that the Israel, Israel, Palestine, or Southwest Asia, that the Middle East is, is messy sometimes? Right. Right. Uh, another one we have here, guys, we get into the ethnic conflicts here. We're talking about Ethiopia and Eritrea. And so here's Ethiopia right here. We look at Eritrea in the north right here. Both of them were ruled by Italy uh, during World War II. Italy kind of came in and took that area over. It was one of the first colonies. And so we look at after World War II, Eritrea became part of Ethiopia. But again, they are not the same ethnicity. They're not the same nationality, really. They're not the same culture. Uh, we've seen, we went all the way to 1991 uh, for Eritrean independence. In 1998 to 2000, war broke out again over a border dispute. So that is one of the areas that we see ethnic conflict here in the Horn of Africa. It's still hot, but it's getting better, right? There's there's a resurgence of uh, you know some some nationalism on on Eritrea and part right, past this book date. Uh, again, another one here we look at, Sudan, uh, no more ethnic conflict. Uh, we look at north, we have the northern areas, Arab versus uh, other ethnic groups. The south is heavily Christian, and they opposed Muslim rule at the time. And so we can see over, almost 2 million people are killed between 1983 and 2005. And eventually South Sudan voted for independence in the year 2011, and they, were, they are the newest nation that's been created, South Sudan, brand new country created in the year 2011. So keep in mind, again, you're seeing this, like, uh, the, the, the conflict that happens with culture, right? And we're, we're tying, tying religion. You're seeing a pattern here, yes. right? Bringing everything go together. Because we're going to beat you over the head with conflict today. Uh, we also have conflict in the west of Sudan. Sudan had quite a bit of conflict going on. In the west, we had uh, black Muslims versus Arab Muslims and the government. And the Darfur region is the one that it's known as... And they talked about the ethnic cleansing or the genocide of Darfur that occurred here. And so about 500,000 people were killed and about 2 million people were displaced from that area. Uh, the United States and uh, some of the other um, MDC countries did not at first view this as a genocide, but today they look back and say, yes, this was a genocide. We should have probably stepped in and done something about it. Yeah, we're not very good at that. We are not. Again, we look at the East, too, right? And we, we go back to economics, right? And we go back to regionalism. We go back to, to uh, centrifugal forces, right, that we just learned about. You see, you see uh, those forces, right, these, these things that drive people apart in terms of religion. You see it in terms of, of economics. Another green slide for you guys, more areas of dislocation that aren't in the book yet. Uh, and so we look at Sub-Saharan Africa, about 20% of the world's refugees are coming from Sub-Saharan Africa, and there's lots of civil wars. We looked at, we just talked about some of the genocide going on there in the Darfur region of Sudan. Rwanda had had a genocide, which you guys, I believe, have, have learned should, a little bit about already. You should have heard of that. Right. So um, we look at some of the problems that have gone on there, lots of issues again, mostly civil war and government problems, uh, or, or ethnic or religious, when we look at some of the we talked about that in the creation of South Sudan and the capital Juba. There's the Darfur region is Darfur. Uh, we look at some more of the ethnic conflict here in the Horn of Africa. We already talked about uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea. We also have Somalia. Somalia has had a lot of problems, civil war, 
famine, all kinds of issues happen there. Um, they were once considered a nation state, but today there's been there's a lot more uh, Sunni Muslims coming to that area who speak Somali. So it's, the population has been divided up. We've got kind of clans and subclans that are kind of running right. Somalia. And uh, we, we also see that like Somali land in the north would like to break away from that. Uh, and so there's been a lot of issues. They had a dictatorship collapse in 1991. The United States got involved to try to stop that and try to help the going on there at the time. Uh, and then we got involved in a uh, terrorist battle there as well, um, where we could not leave any of our people behind. We weren't even supposed to be there. And so the United States got involved there too. This is the Black Hawk Down incident, if yes. you've ever seen the movie or, or have heard of that. Right? Keep in mind, again, on the surface, this looks like a nation state, right? The majority, the far wide majority of the people are Sunni, right, and speak Somali. So you'd think that you would have a little bit of nation state status, but it, it goes a little bit low below the surface and you get into um, clan, subclan stuff. Yes. Tribal conflict. <laughs> so you see that happen as well. Right? Some of these are relatively stable, some of them are not in a failed state. Right, to this, and, and Somalia would be a kind of the, the poster child for that, right? It's a, it's a country that doesn't work. It's a, it's a nation or a state that just doesn't work. Go ahead. All right, so uh, we can hop into Lebanon as well, right, since we're here. Um, there's ethnic fighting, right, uh, um, that's existed in the 70s, right? Beirut was fairly well destroyed. The U.S. Embassy was destroyed. Uh, a couple hundred Marines died in a, in a truck bombing there uh, in the 80s, right? It ended in 83, right after that, that truck bombing, right? But there's major religious differences. Um, there's also uh, the Druze that are in there, the Shia and Sunni that are competing. So you have intrafaith and interfaith faith conflict happening all of their, um, this is largely settled down. It's not as, as big as it once was, um, but it's, you know, there's still, you know, wars don't necessarily go away in people's minds, so just keep that in mind. All right, when we get into uh, conflicts, right, uh, India, Pakistan, and, and uh, partition, right, is the word that we're going to use, the dividing of the British colony that was one, that was all of South Asia, right? It was that subcontinent. So there's words that you're going to hear and hear them other places. Words like subcontinent. The only place you really hear that is going to be uh, India, right? Subcontinent, right? When the Brits controlled it, used to be India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh all rolled into one, right? Uh, when uh, Gandhi and the nationalist movement happens and the Brits um, give independence to the uh, to the Indians, right? It immediately kind of blows up into um, uh, a uh, religious conflict, right? That Muslims uh, move to Pakistan and what is known as East Pakistan at the time, but later right, moves to East and West, right, for Muslims, um, you know, and you hear the word partition. When you hear the word partition, this means India, right, when they get their independence. And it goes from one territory, one colonialized territory, to three separate places, right? And it's actually two separate places, but then eventually becomes three. And you have millions of people displaced during this time. It is one of the biggest mass migrations in history. And it gets really ugly, right, that there's, there's um, atrocities, right, on, on both sides. All right, so again, we, we hop right into then our third biggest region of dislocation. We look at um, Afghanistan. And where you put Afghanistan, is it Central Asia? Is it in Southwest Asia? Is it in South Asia? It's right in the middle yeah, of all tough. those things. So Afghan, Afghanistan is going to come up, right? Um, so you see refugees in Pakistan, you see the Sri Lankan Civil War, which is in your book, um, and we'll, we'll get to a little later, right? Those being good, right? Our, our other spots that we look at for areas of dislocation would be Colombia and, and the former Yugoslavia. And we'll get into ethnic cleansing, right? Which is, uh, you know, our, our fun topic right here at the end, but that's going to cause dislocation as well. Right? So there's the partition, right? And you look at these numbers, right? Sheer numbers of people. These are millions of people moving now, right? Millions of people, right? This isn't a couple people moving into your into your neighborhood, right? And you see the difference, right? And we see primarily Hindus moving out and into of Bangladesh and Pakistan and into India, right? And again, this is a hot spot right now in, in, in India, right? The Indian Muslim population is not necessarily being treated as well um, as as um, as, as Hindu uh, Indians right now in, in India. All right, so again, uh, we, we look at conflict, right? And we can, we can look at the, 
conflict between India and Pakistan. By the way, they're both nuclear. They both have nukes. Doesn't that make you feel good? Safe at home? Yeah, it makes me feel real good. Yeah, right? Definitely a hot spot for hate, Right? They hate each other. They fight low-level war for years over Kashmir and, and the Jammu area, right? And this is uh, you know, a beautiful area that has been bombed out, right? And, and has um, a high number of landmines, right? And it's, it's all this disputed area. China also has a stake in there, um, but but that's uh, that's not necessarily as hot, right? But uh, you have troops on both sides, right, that patrol this, uh, right, which is a line of control, right? It's not even a, a border, right? It's a line of control because it's so hotly disputed. All right, and again, then we get into South Asia, start talking about Sri Lanka, right? You have the Tamils and you have the Sinhalese. Uh, they have um, religious uh, ethnic differences as well. Again, 14, you know, Hindu is 14% of the population, and they fought a war for a long time. Now, they, since this book has been published, there's been a peace agreement, and this is largely the civil war is over, right? The book will tell you it's still on, um, but it is over at this point, um, and I believe that the Tamils, uh, you know, basically kind of surrendered, right, to the man. All right, that leads us to the, the, the jolly notion of ethnic cleansing, right? And I'm kidding, right? By following. It's just I hope you know that I'm being sarcastic here, right? But this is not fun, right? This is a form of genocide. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of low-level genocide, if you will, out who don't look or act like you, moving them out of your region so everybody that you see, right, so you have a nation state in that area. Right? Homogeneous society. Is there like you go, place. right? It's, yeah. So it's, it's separation, right? It's usually done through forced migration. If that doesn't work, then, then uh, killing of people, right? There's a lot of sexual assault during this time. There's a lot of rape that goes on. Um, often considered genocide, you know. Right? Um, and we look at this in terms of Europe, right, in the former Yugoslavia. And we look at it in terms of Africa when we look at Rwanda. Right? Other places, when you think of uh, you know, genocide and all that, clearly the Holocaust is going to come up. There's an Armenian genocide that happened that the Turks committed World uh, War I. in World War I, right? which goes largely unknown to talk about it. Uh, we can talk about Darfur. Right? You know, you know, there's some big genocide, right? And we don't really even want to, we don't want to look at how we treat our indigenous people right? in the sure. United States, our, our history in the United States, right? Teeters on, on that. For sure, ethnic cleansing. Right. Yeah. Right. So again, we look at, at all of these. Right? We look at the Soviet Union, and this is a, this is a uh, um, you know we look at, at Stalinist uh, Soviet Union, we look at Chinese uh, during uh, kind of uh, World War II. Right? All of these things. This is a shocking map, um, which you can look at at your leisure, um, and we won't get into it too much. All right. Uh, we are in the Balkan area, right, which is uh, it's across the the I believe the Adriatic Sea from from Italy, right. Um, near Albania, right, and then all of these countries. Back in the day when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I took geography, I had to know one country there, and it was called Yugoslavia, right? You got to know what seven or eight of them, yeah, Mr. Star. Yeah, there's a bunch of them there now. All right, so how does this happen? We use it, the term balkanization is going to come up, right? And devolution is going to come up, right? Where a country devolves, right? It goes from, you know, it's, it's the opposite of evolve, right? It goes from, from one country to fractured states, right, of, of, um, of, of different competing ethnicities. So these are both concepts of the AP. Yeah, so devolution. Devolution, devolution balkanization. Yeah. They're attached. You need to know about them. I can gear, I would, I would place a high wager bet on, on uh, that you'll see one of those two words, right? Um, so think uh, the former Yugoslavia. Think the Balkans, right? And they go into it in the book. They talk about, you know, they have a saying about all the different national, five major nationalities, four official languages. Three major religions. What could go wrong, right? Um, and it all, all held together by Marshal Tito, the the strong man dictator, right, of this time, who was connected to the, to the Soviet Union, right? When communism falls and Tito dies, right, so he, he stays in power for a long time, but eventually he passes away, and all of this, the years of tension between these competing ethnicities, right, blows up, right, and so. We see the ethnic cleansing happening in Bosnia, right? Serbs versus the Bosnian Muslims. We see ethnic Albanians. We see Co the, word, uh, the, the area of Kosovo, right? Which is now, uh, I believe, a country, a territory of. It's, you know, it has switched in my lifetime, right? 
Um, and so again, we look at situation, right? Where is it? It is in this middle ground, right? It's European, right? But it's next to Asia and you've had years and years and years of, of rule and people coming in, right? You had Muslim conquerors there and you have, um, you have the, the Ottoman Empire and you have uh, the, the Byzantines, right? You have all of these things and, and the cultural imprint, right, on this place. So you got a very diverse place, which one would think a very diverse place is going to be fun, right? But it's not, right? There's, there's a lot of competing um, ethnicities. There's a lot of competing nationalities. There you are. There you go. Here it is. Former Yugoslavia right here, all of those countries now. Uh, and you can see all the different ethnicities that are in those places too. So kind of similar to the caucus map that we looked at in uh, Chapter 7, Key Issue 1 and 2. Uh, same kind of thing. Lots of ethnicities existing in one spot. Here's a little bit closer look at them. You can see them even uh, closer up here. You got Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia here, Montenegro. All of these different ethnicities, uh, part of Bosnia, Herzegovina, part of Croatia here. Uh, and that has created the bulk or the majority of the problems in that region. Again, look at Croatia. Look at how oddly shaped. It's shaped like a sea, right? And it covers all of the coast here, right? Yeah. Except for this small <laughs> this area there, there right? Yeah, it's, it's, it keeps Bosnia from being landlocked. But other than that, I mean, you, I mean, this is not an easy, easy map. People did say, oh, there's natural boundaries there, right? This is all based on, on the ethnic cleansing. Right? And the number of Croats are actually not even in right. the, the borders they create. Mm -hmm. right. So there's before, right? There was one. Yeah, that's Ma yeah, Bosnia and Herzegovina, right? And then there's after. So you can see all ethnic the difference, right? You see all like all of all of the uh, you know this area all of a sudden becomes dominated by by Serbs in this area. You know, this area, right? you see, see the consolidation happens when when people are forced to move, right? Mass migration uh, and then you know homicide, right? War. Uh, and, and, and. All right, on to a more bleak, right? I think we can do this here. one quick, because I think you guys learned about it last year mm -hmm. as well. We're looking at Rwanda with the Hutus and the Tutsis, and is it really ethnic cleansing? They talk about the idea that they're not really ethnically different, they're tribally different. In their minds they are. They, in their, right? Exactly, their mm -hmm. identity, they, they believe they are different. And so the Tutsi minority gained power over the Hutu majority. There was an ethnic war that erupted in the 90s over land, over being sick and tired of being controlled by a minority. And so it led to uh, Hutu rebels killing almost a million Tutsis in about 100 days. And, and I, some it's of like you have months. seen the movie, the, yeah. the, uh, the Hotel Rwanda movie. Um, and so that, that is, I mean, a Hollywoodized version of it, but that is essentially what happened. It's very good, right? Yeah. It's about the only Hollywood movie that you will see in a geography class, right? Because it works so well here, right? I believe you, most of you have seen it already. You probably saw it in school, maybe even in eighth grade. The other conflict you have here is uh, the Congo. The Congo had a civil war going on. Um, they had been in colonial, under co colonial control for a long time. Uh, they eventually have a civil war where they gain their independence and they fight for control. Essentially, about five million people are killed during that time. And again, it, it falls under that ethnic cleansing as well here. Again, best example here probably Rwanda because you guys will know it the best too, for sure. Their conflict in Africa, right? And let's talk a look at and it, just take a look. There's 54, 55 countries in. In, in Africa, right? How does this happen? It's because these borders were not created by the African people, right? That the European colonizers would come in and they didn't care which tribe didn't get along. They didn't know about language differences. They looked at uh, the African people and they were going to do what they were going to do to make a buck, right? What was in their best interest, not in the, in the people who were living their best interest. So you can understand, right, how this happens, right? When you've got this checkerboard, this scramble for Africa, right, and these borders being designed, and they don't take into any human... Ironically, we just talked about how Europe screwed the Middle East, too. Right. They also screwed mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. we'll find out more about that next year in World History. Lots, right? This won't, won't go away. And there you go. There's your tribal areas yep. mm -hmm. versus your European colony areas. Mm -hmm. So, much, much different. There probably should be hundreds of countries in Africa, not just yeah. you know, 50. What could go wrong? Right. Nothing like putting rivals in the same country together. Mm -hmm. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So that wraps up Chapter 7, Key Issue 3 and 4. Wraps up Chapter 7 altogether. So keep plugging away, guys. Chapter 8 is up next. We'll get into the political side of ethnic and political geography. 
and enjoy your day. Do something nice because this was depressing, wasn't it? <laughs> right? Be good to each other.